So now let's look at an actual honest to goodness DTD. And the DTD we're going to be looking at is this one, the recipe book DTD, recipe book DTD, you see the name right up there, uh, which is the DTD that's behind the oatmeal recipe that we've been looking at for a while now, and all of the other recipes on the Happy Monkey website. Now, the, uh, what you have to understand is DTDs are a little bit difficult to parse uh, by reading them um, as a human reader. They're not really intended for human readers. They're, as I've said, intended for browsers and other applications that are going to interpret XML. But we're going to uh, take it slow and make some sense of this. So the first thing to notice is these pieces right here the bracket exclamation point dash dash. Um, now anything between one of these and one of those is a comment, including this entire header section up here. And anything in between those two pieces is a comment. Uh, for example, this piece right here is a section header, here's another section header, here's the credits for this particular document. Those are intended for human readers. Anything that's a comment will be ignored by a browser or other application. Um, now this particular DTD, and in fact many DTDs, are written backwards. Right? The child elements are declared at the top and the parent elements are declared lower down. So we're going to look at this DTD backwards, basically. We're going to look at the parent elements first and then move our way back up to the child elements. The first thing we're going to look at is the element recipe. What is the top level element? for the recipe in these XML documents, the element recipe. So we have a declaration here, element recipe. And what is in between these parentheses are all of the child elements of the element recipe. The element recipe has the children, title, recipe info, ingredient list, preparation, etc., etc. Something to notice is that recipe info has a question mark after it, serving has a question mark after it, but ingredient list does not, preparation does not. And that operator, this operator here, indicates how many times this element can be used. So the question mark element means zero or one time. That element can be used zero or one time only. So it can be left off completely, but it can only be used a maximum of one time. So when you have a recipe, you can have one and zero or one recipe info element under that. There are other operators that you can use. There is an asterisk operator, which means zero or more. So you can leave an element off completely, or you can use it one to an infinity, in, an infinite number of times. There's a plus, which means one or more times. So you have to use that element at least once, but you can use it an infinite number of times. And then there's just no operator at all, like ingredient list or preparation which means that you can use that element once and only once. It must be used once and it can only be used a maximum of one time. Right? So that's how to interpret these, those operators that you see throughout here. What we have here is the element recipe and all of the child elements under recipe. So the main, this section here is the main elements of recipe. So you've got title, PC data. What this is telling you is the kind of data that these elements can take. PC data stands for parsed character data, which essentially means 
any string of characters, which makes sense for title because you want the flexibility to be able to name your recipe anything you want. So the title element is just a PC data block. It allows you to specify your title as basically any blob of text that then gets interpreted as a block of text. On the other hand, you've got the element recipe info, which is composed of nothing but child elements. Recipe info is composed of author and blurb and effort and genre, etc. Preparation, the element preparation, is a combination of these two. You've got equipment and steps, etc., but you also have PC data. So in the preparation element, you can specify equipment that might be used in preparation, the steps that might be used in preparation, but you also have this big blob of text, which presumably would be some narrative text explaining the preparation instructions. And in fact, let me show you this recipe again. Here are the preparation instructions. Place all ingredients into a gallon-sized resealable storage bag. It looks like a big blob of text, a PC data blob of text. But if we look at the source code for this recipe, we see the preparation instructions right here. Place all ingredients into a gallon-sized resealable bag, and what we have is equipment. So embedded in that block of text, we have some data that is the equipment element. To use one specific branch of this family tree of elements, we have the element recipe has the child element ingredient list. So the element ingredient list has one child element itself, ingredient. So let's scroll up a little bit. The element ingredient has three children, quantity, unit, and food item, which of course we looked at before. And those may be PC data because you want to be able to specify any string of text for food item, because a food item could be called anything at all. You want to be able to specify anything for units, because you could use any text as a unit. There's probably a controlled vocabulary out there of all of the different units of measure in the world. There are, I'm sure, a huge number of units of measure in the world, but there is no controlled vocabulary being used here. You want to be able to specify any string to say what our unit of measure is here. And they're PC data because you want those to be open to any string of text. So that is a very, very basic introduction to how DTDs are constructed. You declare an element, you declare the child elements of that element, and then you declare those elements, and you specify what kind of data those elements can take. Now let's look at a slightly more complex DTD.